But Mark, let's move on into our final topic. And before we get into everything, before I introduce the guests that we've got on, I should say returning guests um, that we have coming back, make sure to check out patreon.com backslash most valuable podcast. That is how you can help support the podcast. We obviously cannot do what we do each and every week without the help of our wonderful patrons. And with that being said, we are welcome today by one of those wonderful patrons who supports us at the $10 tier. You can be the same if you do so as well. Pat Hill calling in. And, of course, Pat wants to talk about his Chicago Bears. But before I set up the segment, Pat, how are you doing this evening on this wonderful kind of chilly Tuesday? Oh, I'm doing well, considering it's actually a lot colder down here. So this morning I walked outside and it was like, three degrees outside so my face froze and it took me a good hour to unfreeze my face so other than that it was a great day today (laughs) yeah mark and i were complaining about the cold um before we were coming in today but you want to talk about the chicago bears and really you want to ask the question of will the bears regress in 2019 they had a year that Mark had them i believe like 10 and 6 9 and 7 after the khalil mack trade but that was I, I going in, I was like, in the I was like, you know what? Mm-hmm. That's a Bears fan is going to do that. I had them at like seven and nine, eight and eight. Still weren't buying in on them. They exceeded expectations, winning the division, having a great year, going to the playoffs, getting that first game as a home game in the playoffs. I'm just going to kick it to you though to start this segment off. Do you think the Bears are going to regress in 2019, Pat? It's hard for me to like. I think I I have a sinking feeling that they will. And that really, that feeling comes from knowing that this year like went so well and the bears got really lucky in a lot of regards regarding, they had a really favorable schedule where they got a lot of good teams at home and they won those games. Um, They got really lucky with their injuries. They did have injuries to like Robinson, Mac, they had injuries to other guys, but they were able to, during those times they had injuries, they were playing bad teams, and they were able to rest those guys and win those games despite those injuries. But I felt like a lot went right for the Bears this season. And But, but looking on paper, the Bears should be fine. But like thinking about next season, including next year's schedule, which is way more difficult, where you have more home games against really tough teams and away games against better teams, and also considering like the division about the Lions had a the, the Lions did not have a good seat first year under Matt Patricia. The Vikings, we know, took a step back, and the Packers were just kind of a jumbled mesh. I think it's really hard for me to say that the Bears will progress next season when knowing that all three teams in our division went, had a lot going wrong for them. We had a lot going right, and I don't think next year is going to happen for is going to have the same amount of luck for the Bears. So I have that thinking feeling that with all those factors, they are going to regress next season. Well, I think that. Uh, the thing that needs to kind of be put out there is, of course, the Bears are going to regress. They were a 12-4 and four team. They had the best defense in the NFL, and they had a top-10 offense. They should regress. I mean, they should uh, because you look at this team, and, of course, they are bringing back a lot of core players, but they're going to start getting to that point fairly soon where players have to get paid. Uh, Kyle Long had to restructure his contract to free up some cap space for the Bears to spend money and keep him around because he otherwise he was going to be probably cut this offseason. Uh, you're looking into a future where you got to make decisions about really key players like Amukamura. You're going to make player uh, decisions about guys like Amos. There's a lot of players that are going to either this season, next offseason, have decisions need to be made. Mm-hmm. Uh but you look at this team, like I said, it's a top of the line defense. Lose a defensive coach. Pagano is going to come in. The team might still be fine, but there's a little bit of an adjustment period, a, bit, a little bit of learning for that. The offense was learning for a good chunk of this season. And, you know, we saw really great uh, highlights and really great kind of shining moments, especially as the season kind of started to move along. Things were starting to look really good. And there were things that you sit there and you're like, well, why don't we ever, you know, use Jordan Howard, for Mm -hmm. example? Uh, You know, there's things like that that were question marks, too. And we'll see how things continue to develop under this. But they were a 12 and four team. So, yeah, they're going to lose more games next year than they lost this year. I'm sure you I look at some of these other teams, though, and Detroit. I hate to do this to the fans of the Detroit Lions, but. I'm not scared of the Detroit Lions. Mm-hmm. I thought Matt Patricia was a bad hire. 
I, I didn't get it. And I, I'm not scared of him always there. I, I mean, especially mm-hmm. the rumors how, like, now there are rumors like, oh, should, should, should the Lions uh, trade Matthew Stafford and kind of go with a lesser, like, trade mm-hmm. for a Case Keenum while they maybe bring they can someone in? Make a deal, get a Josh Rosen. But <laughs> maybe. Uh, you know, Green Bay, Green Bay is a question mark to mm-hmm. me because I, I don't believe um, they made a good hire and coach either. Uh, although Aaron Rodgers is really the one that's in control. So. We'll see what happens with that. Minnesota's a big question mark to me as well. but a, Well, I should say it's a smaller question mark than Green Bay. But it's still a question mark in are they are we going to see the Green Bay that had an effective offense mm-hmm. when they switched offensive coordinators? Or are we going to see mediocrity out of it's the Trish, Matt, um, with uh, – what's his name? Kirk, the Matt LaFleur Kirk question Cousins. mark too. Yeah. Of what is that going to bring? Um, I just – with me, with the division – I will, no matter what, always at the beginning of the year, it could play out how it did, but I will always say a prediction for the NFC North is give me a split against the Vikings, split against the Packers, two wins against the Lions. That's what I come in every year because the Packers and Vikings, although the Vikings didn't live up to the expectations I wanted them to be, I always feel like they're tough games. Same with the Packers. They always play the Bears tough, and the Bears play them tough as well. Yeah, and the other thing, too, um, uh, I got to throw it out there. Mm-hmm. You know, they, the Vikings played the Bears tough one of these games, not the other one. Uh, but, uh, well, that last game was – let's not talk about that Week 17 game. It was It was done. They were ready to, to go on vacation. Uh, and anyways, but, yeah, I mean, when I, when I look at this team – even if they do regress, they should still be a playoff team, mm-hmm. and and that's okay to me. You know, they don't have to be twelve and four; they can still be a ten and six team getting well, the playoffs. Well, I'll ask you, Pat, and I'm going to throw this your way: if they do regress, are they going to regress to where, like Mark said, are they still going to be a playoff team, or could you see this team regressing to where they just miss the playoffs in the NFC? I feel like they would be more of the playoff last spot on the team if they were to regress, because I think uh, they still have, they do have enough talent on the team to kind of sustain them. And I agree with a lot of the points that we've, that you guys have talked about that there's they the regressing. It doesn't mean out of the playoffs. The only way I can see them not making the playoffs is if there's a like huge amount of injuries, either the offense just doesn't progress one bit and the defense just falls off a cliff. And I, the only my only concern about the defense was I think I read an article last week that talked about the Bears put a lot of emphasis on how many how many turnovers they had, but this article kind of argued that turnovers is not really a sustainable stat in the NFL. Like you can maybe sustain sacks, but you can't sustain turnovers for year to year basis, and that's how a lot of that's how a lot of games were won by the Bears. So that can that one right there kind of gave me concern. Like maybe the Bears the Bears defense is still going to be a great defense, but maybe they're just not going to have that game changing effect on the game that they had this past season. And so a lot of the onus is going to be on Mitch Trubisky and the offense to according to Matt Nagy, like really start playing ball and really get better. But I would still see them as maybe not the division winner, which would be really disappointing, but maybe it's like that last spot playoff team where they'll have to go somewhere to play a wild card game. So that's where I see the bears next season. If they were to regress. Yeah, and right now the big thing for me is I'm looking at the schedule. And just to go over it, the home games for the Bears, obviously it also depends on how many of these are going to be like back-to-back road games. And do the Bears have something ridiculous where – wasn't mm-hmm. the Thanksgiving one where they played the they late played game on Sunday? They played games in like 11 days. Yeah, like they played like the that. late That's game on NFL Sunday. <laughs> and yeah. then they had to go and play Thanksgiving. And the Bears do play in London this year. They do. Um, but the opponents that they have are the ones that are listed as home games because I can't remember which one's the London game. Maybe you remember, Mark. Um, but they have obviously Lions, Bears, Vikings, home and away. Then the home opponents are Dallas, the New York Giants, the Chiefs, Chargers, and Saints. And then the road opponents are the Redskins, the Raiders. Which I think is the London game. The Redskins th- is the no, London game? No, I think game? it's the Raiders. Okay. Yeah, so it is Raiders. the Redskins – Raiders, you good thing for the Bears. They lose yeah. a road game um, to London because Oakland doesn't have any home games yeah. anywhere this um, year. So <laughs> then you've got the Eagles, the Broncos, 
and the Los Angeles Rams. And really quickly, kind of while Pat was um, giving his answer about would they regress out of the playoffs, I am very – and I get that this is going to change because the draft – need. well, first off, free agency needs to happen. The draft needs to happen. And then, of course, training camp needs to happen before these become official. But kind of jotting down initially where I see wins and losses – with the division, I'm doing the same thing that I said before, is that I'm giving you two wins against the Lions, a win against the Packers, win against the Vikings, and I'm giving you a loss against the Vikings and the Packers. I know that you beat the Vikings twice last year. I just always do that for the NFC um, North when it comes to the Bears. Then the other teams that I think are automatic wins based off of last year. I'm going to say the Giants because although you lost to them last year, that was in New York. You get them in Chicago this time. The Raiders, I mean, really the Bears should be able to beat the Raiders unless it's like, hey, the London game screwed us up and the Raiders got to win. And then the Redskins because who the hell is going to be their quarterback next year? Those are the ones that automatically I penciled down as wins. So right away, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven wins off the bat. I also gave you seven losses off the bat, and some you guys might disagree with. The Saints, Chargers, and Chiefs. I know they're all at home. I like those three teams a lot better than I do um, the Bears. Not saying they're going to be blowouts, but I give those losses to the Bears. The Eagles, because looking at the playoffs, you lose to the Eagles at home. Now you get them on the road. But that would probably in my be mind, inspiration, I would imagine. Maybe, and that's the thing. If it's inspiration, that one could be flipped. And then the Rams, because yes, you beat the Rams at home, but playing in L.A., is that going to be different? Plus with the Rams, how are they going to treat their Super Bowl hangover with losing how they did yep. um, to the Patriots? Then obviously the Vikings and the Packers. The two games, and I believe there's only two that I'm missing on, and I'll ask you guys, Pat, I'll go to you first, is the two opponents that I don't know how to gauge are the Broncos, because although John Elway can't talk about it, they will be adding Joe Flacco this year, and then the Dallas Cowboys, because they're just two teams where they're kind of, I feel like they're going to be right in the middle kind of teams, and I don't know how those two teams are going to match up with the Bears what would you think about those two, Broncos and Cowboys, and how the Bears will fare against those two new opponents this year, Pat? So judging by the schedule and judging by where we play and how the teams are, I would go, this might be controversial, but I would go win against the Broncos, and I would go loss against the Cowboys just for right now because for me the Cowboys and the Bears play very similar styles, and they both, they both have good defenses. You know, Dak Prescott and Mitch Trubisky have been, like, kind of judged as, like, they can run, but then maybe they can't be, like, the passers that you need to be excel in the NFL. And they both have – their offices are different, but they both have really good pieces. And I kind of see that game coming out to Prescott and Trubisky, just far out, but them struggling to get anything going and the defense is kind of taking over. But I kind of see Dallas with Ezekiel Elliott, assuming he's playing, assuming he's healthy, kind of taking that game over. And the Broncos, I just think that they're, they they also have a strong defense, but they don't have that strong offense to me. So I feel like for going to Denver, despite being in a row condition, I still feel like the Bears pull that one off because I just don't think their offense can overcome what their defense can bring. And Mark, before you give your answer, if I put it in just like mm-hmm. Pat said, that would mean my win and loss for the Bears would be 8-8 eight and eight for next season. From what Pat said? Yeah. So if I put Broncos as a win, Cowboys as a loss, I'm giving the Bears an 8-8 eight and eight season next year based off of the schedule that I see. For me, I, I first think it's I, I, I first think that the LA Chargers, um, I don't think that's a for sure loss at all. I don't think I don't think the Saints are a for sure loss either. The in the playoffs, most people agreed that the team that had the best chance, and this is surprising because of course, you know. We know what happened to the Saints. Mm-hmm. The team with the best chance of beating the Saints was the Chicago Bears. Yeah. Um, and I, I still think they match up against the Saints just fine. But I would still count that as a loss. The Chargers is the one that I think that the Bears 
could could beat the Chargers. I mean, they're always a team that's a little inconsistent. Well, if Lamar I Jackson could almost beat the Chargers, why can't Mitch Trubisky? Right, right? and I bolt <laughs> up. Uh, but anyways, when it comes to the teams you were actually asking about, uh, to me, I still I think the Philadelphia Eagles. I think that can be a win because of the inspiration. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that has a big effect. But even if you count it as a loss, uh, I think that Denver Broncos. Yes, the Denver Broncos are a better team with Joe Flacco, but we still need to see Joe Flacco play. I mean, is it mm-hmm. going to be what we all assumed with Jay Cutler going to Miami? Like, yeah, this makes sense. He played well with, <laughs> with Adam Gase. And then Jay Cutler was like, no, nah, I'm ready for retirement. I'm just here for the paycheck. Uh, <laughs> Joe Flacco could easily be the same thing. He got benched last year to a guy who really was not a good passer. Uh, he was just good with his feet. And – got completely shut down by the Chargers. Um, so, with that being said, uh, I think the Bears can beat the Denver Broncos, uh, although I think the Denver Broncos could potentially make some interesting decisions um, in the draft, which might make them a much better team. The other one is going to be for the Dallas Cowboys, especially with this being a home game, I'm really not scared of the Dallas Cowboys if I'm mm-hmm. a Bears fan because the Bears had the best rushing defense in the NFL. And what did the Dallas Cowboys do really well? Run the ball with Zeke. Mm-hmm. And every year, that offensive line, which was once so great, gets a little bit worse mm-hmm. because pieces get a little chipped off, players get moved somewhere else. I wouldn't be scared. Of, I wouldn't be that scared of Dak Prescott. He can make things happen, but I wouldn't be that scared about him. The thing that scares me about the Cowboys is just Dak Prescott. Or I'm sorry, it's just Ezekiel, uh, Ezekiel Elliott. And like I said, Bears do just fine shutting down runners. Um, I mean, they were like well over halfway through the season before they finally let a running, uh, a running back score mm-hmm. a touchdown. Um, I really think the Bears could probably be with this schedule a ten and six team. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's really, I mean, obviously, like you said, a lot Chargers, of things have to happen. For Chargers, us too. Chiefs, and Saints—they're not like all right for sure losses. Mm-hmm. I just favor those teams. Anything can happen. Depending on where it is in the season, what injuries have happened, there's obviously a lot of factors. But, of course, everyone likes to look at the schedule right away and go, all right, that's a win, that's a loss, this is another win. Ooh, we could be a 12-14. and 14. We could be a f- – screw it, we're 16-0 and 0 next year. Super Bowl, Super Bowl. Usually Bears. are. Um, but <laughs> the other thing I will ask, and this kind of goes into me of the regression, and I will throw this your way first, Pat – is to me the draft is going to be very, very important to the Bears only because they do not have that first-round pick because obviously they gave it up for Khalil Mack, and Bears fans probably aren't sitting there going, oh, man, I wish we had that pick. No, Mm -hmm. you're happy you had Khalil Mack this year. But for you, how important is the Bears' draft strategy in order to not regress? because they don't have that first round pick this year. I think it is important because I think you need to have depth at certain positions. And I would, if I were to pick, I would say like the offensive line stayed mostly healthy, mostly healthy with the exception of Kyle Long. So you have to account for that. A lot of people keep saying that they need a running back this year to fit the scheme of Matt Nagy. But to be honest, I'm, I don't really agree with that. Because I think that despite Jordan Howard struggling last year and people making a big deal about how he's not a scheme fit, I think a guy with that kind of talent, you can still find a way, even though his scheme is not a perfect man, I still feel like you can find a way to maximize his talent. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you just get rid of a talented running back just because he's just not a scheme fit. If you go into the season and he's still struggling, maybe you consider that, but I don't think you give up after one season. I think we, at Bears fans, we learned that with Greg Olson after Mm -hmm. letting him go because he wasn't Mike Martz and that didn't turn out well but we're so far back in the in the draft that i guess we can we can maybe find one impact player who can get some time if a player's injured but i would say it, it was more of like shoring up the o-line adding more guys in the secondary for positions especially cornerbacks since amukamara is getting older how fuller's not super not old yet but he's getting there and even though people like really trash the defensive backs this year for not performing well at the combine, I still think you can maybe find a couple guys in there to help shore up that back end, especially with the questions regarding Bryce Callahan and Adrian Amos. They both might be back. One might be back, but we don't know that yet. So I still think that's important. What do you think of Mark? 
Um, I'm actually not super worried about it because where uh, where Ryan Pace has been most effective has been in the middle of the draft. Mm-hmm. So you got guys like Eddie Jackson, Tariq Cohen. Um, you know, he's been very, very successful in that kind of middle area of finding those gems. And you got to credit the scouts for it. I mean, Ryan Pace was a scout uh, before, too. So these are guys who feel comfortable in that position. Um, I'm not really worried about them not having a first round pick for this because to me, Khalil Mack is worth the trade. Uh, it's worth not having that because who are you going to draft? That's going to be giving you more production on the defense side of the ball than Khalil Mack. So not I, people. I'm not worried about that case. And sure. It'd be nice to have a first round pick, but then we don't have Khalil Mack. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm okay. I'm all right with it. Uh, I am. I'm very excited. I do hope that there's something spent in the offensive line. Uh, I agree with that. And as much as I love Kyle Long and he's a bear forever and all of that, he is having trouble staying on the field. So you got to get some something figured out there. Um, I would love to, you know, go for more pass rushers in the draft too. Mm-hmm. That'd be phenomenal. I actually am not opposed to the Bears going out and getting this as a wide receiver, mm-hmm. too. Uh, a young wide receiver that can be there can just add one more dynamic to it. Um, you know, the Bears are in a fortunate position where the roster is very good. Mm-hmm. You're very close to just a BPA type of situation. See, the one thing, the reason why I asked that question is you mentioned pass rusher and wide receiver. The one position I'm thinking about is running back, too, is because I'm looking here at. Um, bearswire.usa.com, um, and they, from last week, have a quote here from Nagy talking about what he wants in a running back. And the quote from Nagy was, when you're dealing with running backs, for us in this offense, you want to be able to have a guy that has really good vision, that can make guys miss. At the same time, there's that balance of being a hybrid, being able to make things happen in the pass game too, and yet, to where you're not one-dimensional, and that's not easy. And, of course, the article goes on, well, duh, Nagy, you're describing Kareem Hunt. So you're basically saying, hey, we just need the next Kareem Hunt, sure, and we'll be fine. But for me, I'm looking just in that alone, because, of course, like you said earlier in the segment, Mark, of like, oh, just can we learn how to use – Jordan Howard. And really, I do think the offensive line was to blame mm-hmm. for a lot of Jordan Howard's struggles this year. But two guys I'm looking at, and I don't know if they're going to be A, I don't think I don't know if they'll be available for the Bears' first pick in the third round. And B, I don't know if the Bears make a trade to get into the second round to possibly get one of these two guys. But two of the guys, if the Bears are going to look running back to help out on some of those woes, two guys that fit that bill, Joshua Jacobs, who is a Alabama running back, elite vision, great pass catcher out of the backfield, and doesn't fumble the ball. Only had three fumbles, I want to say. Um, yeah, three f- career fumbles and a hun- and 317 touches. And the other one, it's going to be interesting to see how high he rises because he's got good vision and he's a pass catcher is Justice Hill out of Oklahoma State, but he's a guy who just ran a 4-4-40 at the NFL Combine, and people were really hyping up his 40 speed that that might boost his draft stock. Pat, I'm going to kick it to you before we go to Mark. Any final thoughts on the Bears and a possible regression for 2019? I feel like I sound like the biggest bear hater in the world despite the fact that I am a Bears fan because I just come on thinking that we're not going to meet the hype. (laughs) But I think it's usually, I think it's important to like recognize that like, hey, we had a really awesome season, but it's it's also understandable to realize that we might not be able to like recreate kind of like the magic of that first season with a lot of things going right. And I think it's important to like kind of assess like as a Bears fan, like, like here's our schedule here's what we need to keep going right. And here's where we, what we need to see with this roster or the coaching of staff and looking at it, I don't want to say that the bears will be, will regress next season, but it's a feeling inside of this goes like, Hey, there's a genuine possibility that they could, I'm not saying they would miss the playoffs because I don't think they'll stoop to that, but 
they might not have the great season that they had last year in terms mm-hmm. of wins and losses. And that's okay if they still make the playoffs, but Bears fans shouldn't be out and about like screaming like we had such a terrible year after we were so great last year and to say, Hey, this was coming in a way. Like we had a tougher schedule. Some things went some things might happen in the next season, but we don't know that yet. But it's good to keep that in the back of your mind as a Bears fan, so you're not surprised when like they might not win the division or just barely sneak into the playoffs. I think a funny thing too is, is we we talk about a little bit of the luck that the Bears had and how turnovers are difficult to replicate year to year. Um but the Chicago Bears in their four losses one play goes differently, and that's mm-hmm. a sixteen and O team. I mean, you look at a mer- it had took a miraculous comeback uh, from Aaron Rodgers. Mm-hmm. There was a huge special teams mess up uh, from from the Miami game. Special teams again uh, for the Patriots. Uh, that Giants game. I mean, the outside we want to talk about more, you know, special teams mm-hmm. situations. I mean, the Bears honestly were not far away from being. Uh, you know, and obviously one win changes everything there. Well, it's the beauty also of what we say, like one bad bounce with the football can change an outcome. Exactly. Um, you know, I think it's like the Bears only their total losses they only lost by like fifteen points total. Mm-hmm. Um, so they were a really good team. Um, and I think they'll continue to be a really good team next year, even if they regress a little bit. I'm not that worried about it. I think they'll be just fine. The thing I kind of want to throw out here at the end, and I before I say this, it might be a little far-fetched, but I'm still going to go out on my olive branch here and make <laughs> this comparison. The Bears in 2019 have the potential to have a Cubs-like 2015-2016 two seasons, where 12-4, I know the playoff run was not as far, but also, like you said, if Cody Parkey's not on that team, you guys might be going on to the next round, and the Eagles would not be going on to playing. The Saints were like the Cubs. That 2015 year, that John Madden first year, we weren't expect. Now, of course, we didn't win the division like the Bears did, but we weren't expected to be in the championship series, but we were. And then that next year, we used that experience – to then make a playoff run. I wonder if the Bears can be a team where it's like, hey, we're good enough to make the playoffs, and then once we get into the playoffs, hey, we're going to use that experience from last year, that bad taste in our mouth, to go and make a playoff run. And, of course, it depends on what additions they make, what they do in the draft, um, how the Chuck Pagano um, addition adds to this team with them losing Vic Fangio to... The Broncos, because one thing I will say about the schedule, you got a lot of revenge games on it. Khalil Mack's going to want to beat the hell out of the Raiders. Matt Nagy, I'm assuming, will want to beat the hell out of the Chiefs. You've got Vic Fangio going up against the Bears. I would think Vic would want to beat the old team to prove that um, he's doing well in Denver. And it's going to be interesting to see how things kind of play out for the Bears in 2019 after they set the bar a little bit high after Matt Nagy's first season. But this is where you guys come in. Let us know what you guys think down below in the comment section. Are we crazy for even asking this question? Is it like the Bears are fine? They're not going to regress. They're going to be okay in 2019. Also, let us know if you do think, (coughs) had to clear my throat there, if you do think they will regress, why do you think they'll regress? What's going to be the main reason for that? Make sure to hit us up on Patreon if you want to support us. Like Pat. Pat, obviously, thank you for your undying support and for everyone who supports us on Patreon.com backslash Most Vowel Podcast. Also, go and rate and review The Onside Kick on Apple Podcasts and iTunes. want to thank you guys for watching on YouTube, although you're looking at the logo right now. And thank you guys for listening on podcast services around the world. But as always, have a good day, everybody.